What's up, everyone? How's it going out there? Let me add Kevin to our broadcast here. There you are. Hey, here Kevin. I am. Here you are. Hi. Hello, everyone out there. Uh, please say hey. Let us know where you're watching from. I'm in Maine. Kevin's in a very strange land that has dealt with forest fires and flooding in, in and the span smoke. of 24 hours. And smoke. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but yeah, the, the, the topic of today, we're going to be here to talk about sync licensing, which is the you know usage of songs in TV shows and films and commercials and all sorts of stuff, which Kevin used to manage the sync licensing for CD Baby a long time ago. So true story. That true is all story. true. <laughs> so you, ha you have some things to share about the misadventures of placing music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an interesting world and uh, something that. You know, there, there, there's a lot of uh, lack of understanding about what the sync market really is and what your opportunity for getting your music placed in film and TV is. So we're going to be talking about that today. Hey, is, is do we have someone from Tanzania here? Wow. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Serbia, Jamaica, and Michigan. Michigan. <laughs> Serbia, <laughs> Tanzania, <laughs> Michigan. Hello yeah. to Michigan yeah brooklyn Berlin. wow sweden ghana this is crazy chris i don't i don't know that we've ever been so international before. oh look we even have someone from pakistan that's crazy no we do not have an office there but we you know we have an office in india but i know based on where you're at that could be a thousand miles away right so that's more than a thousand miles yeah but uh another question we're getting um we're getting where everyone lives but here's another question to, uh relevant to the topic who has had their music licensed before and where? What did it get used in a show or a commercial or something like that? I would love to to hear all about it. But um Yeah. Wow. Hey, we've got India in the house. You mentioned India. So this is probably the most uh at least when we've asked people where they're from, this has got to be one of the most diverse global live streams we've done chris i mean people may have been there but just didn't say where they're Did from it. but this is crazy Ar arkansas victoria bc awesome Philippine. um wow. we just had someone say that they are a music supervisor so maybe they'll have some advice for people in the comments which uh reminds me um if you have questions about sync licensing please ask them in the comments we'll try to uh, work them into the discussion for sure but uh, just to kind of kick us off cd baby offers sync licensing it's bundled in with our distribution but it's not really an extra it's a huge effort we have a team of people who are you know actively seeking placements for your music and in the past year we have had placements on every network you could ever think of including all the streaming ones like netflix hulu amazon prime all that stuff um you know big big studios um an ad campaign for amazon a bunch of stuff so um First of all, we want to make sure everyone knows that we do that and that you're taking advantage of it. It's free, included with distro. But also, there are some things you can actually do proactively to increase your chances of getting um, getting a placement or at least getting our attention that we could uh, pitch your music. So that's part of what we want to talk about today. Yeah, and just for clarity, the, the sync licensing program, like Chris said, it's bundled in with distribution at CD Baby, but it is an extra box you got to check in the sign up process. Sometimes people get in a hurry and they're like, oh, I'll come back and do that later. You have to you know, check that box. It's an extra granting of rights that uh, you allow us that uh, permission to represent you in that uh, in that capacity. And it's only available for original music. Although sometimes if people come to us with cover song, needing to license cover songs, we can handle that too. But in your account, it'll look for uh, if you if you wrote the song and it's an original track. Yeah. So um, speaking of in your account, here's one thing that we really have to emphasize is your metadata matters. It's one of the best ways that we have to find your music. And, and metadata is simply data about your music. So that's your song title, your artist name, things like that, the basics. But CD Baby also gives you a chance to put in uh, two genres and two subgenres, and then there's a third uh, descriptor that's kind of, you know, a fancy little adjective about your music. We give you the chance to put in three sounds like artists. So that stuff is so important. Um, when music supervisors come to us and they have a, a, you know, it's called a creative brief. It's basically like, here's what we need. 
uh, a lot of times they have specific uh, artist reference, you know, and it could be Johnny Cash or Nine Inch Nails or something like that. Um, and who you have said you sound like, uh, you know, it's one of the first things we're going to look at. So please don't choose someone you think people are searching for. Please don't choose someone you wish you sounded like because they're an influence on you. <laughs> Pick someone you do sound like. And I know it's hard sometimes to, to determine that for ourselves because we think we sound like our heroes or maybe conversely, we think we sound like crap. But, you know, ask your fans, ask people who you trust to give an honest assessment of your music uh, in terms of who it's similar to and then include those artists. Yeah, when I was doing pitching for CD Baby, uh, this was a while ago, but almost it was like if anyone had guitars in their band, they said they sounded like Coldplay because Coldplay was popular yeah. at the time. And it just wasn't true. It's not helpful. Uh, you know, again, like Chris said, it's not who you wish you sounded like. Um, this is a, where Pandora, I like, is uh, one potential tool to help you see who it's relating to you. Or if you go to Spotify, it's, you know, things that people also liked these artists. Uh, chances are there's some similar um, similarities there that you might not have thought of before, but that's something that is, it's, it's very helpful that you get it more accurate. It's, you know, you want it to be somebody that's maybe more known than you. So it might be somebody that a music supervisor is already familiar with or something like that. But uh, yeah, this is not uh, Hey, I'm going to game the system because that helps you zero when it comes to sync licensing. Yeah, because a lot of times um, it's not simply that the music supervisor is looking for something that sounds like a particular artist or song. Chances are it's already been edited to that sort of placeholder music. So they really need appropriate matched genre, matched, uh, you know, sounds like artists because, because again, it's probably already cut in a lot of uh, instances to that music. I just wanted to answer this question real quick. Is it certain I would get a placement when I distribute with CD Baby? <laughs> No, no, it is definitely not. We we do have, you know, almost three quarters of a million artists. But the thing we can promise you is because we've been collecting a, a lot of metadata on the music that we've distributed for more than 20 years, we have uh, an amazing way to find the right music for music supervisors. So anytime, you know, there's a need that your music might match, we will, we know we'll find it and we'll, you know, we'll try to pitch it. And from there, it's basically up to the music supervisor what they like. But uh, no, we yeah. cannot guarantee it. Just just in case uh, <clears throat> we have some some folks in the audience that aren't familiar with the idea of sync licensing, they might have just stumbled across our live stream and said, "Look at these two handsome men talking on Facebook." <laughs> I must have grown run. men with a baseball cap <laughs> yeah. on. What? Yeah, and guitars in the background. <laughs> what are they discussing? Uh, sync licensing is when. Um, uh, your music is taken and synced, uh, you know, it's the full term word is synchronization, is synced to uh, video. Usually it's video. Uh, it can be a number of things. But um, in this case, what we're talking about is it being a TV commercial or a uh, TV show or a movie or, um, you know, little webisodes or things on the web. Anytime there's a uh, production that takes music and adds it in with background music that's going along while the characters are talking, or it's this feature thing that really makes the scene or in a commercial, we see it all the time with TV commercials where uh, the music can play a pretty important part on uh, the commercial and what you feel and think about the product that's being shown. So that's the idea of a synchronization license and getting your music synced uh, with those type of projects. And the one thing I know that's on our list that I would highlight that's the most important thing you can know about sync licensing is it's not about your status, your fame. It's about how useful is this track to what I'm trying to accomplish in this scene or this part of the production or in this commercial. If you don't understand that fact, it'll be a frustrating process. Yeah, the way I phrased that was it's not about your best song because it's also, you know, taste is uh, subjective. And 
my first sync placement I ever got was for the throwaway track on my first solo album. It's just a bunch of noise and like distorted <laughs> spoken word nonsense. It's it's really something I was like, I would never play that for anyone if they were like, hey, what's your music like? And that was the very first thing I ever got paid for. And it was, I think it was an AMC uh, horror movie trailer thing. So it worked for that. So anyways, that's not something I would have ever uh, pitched to someone. But lo and behold, there was a use for it. So so um, make sure you're thinking beyond just best and also think beyond newest. It's not about your newest song. So many of the ways in which we spend our energy trying to get attention for our songs is about the newest thing because that's what we're the most proud of. You know, um, sync licensing, that's not the case. It's It really could be a 30-year-old song that is perfect for something. So you know, make sure your whole catalog is signed up for it and, and don't neglect your, your oldest tunes. Yeah. Our, the whole industry, especially if you're an artist writing, recording and releasing music, the whole industry all the way back for many, many years was really uh, geared around the hit single, the single that's going to go to radio. Now, a lot of times we're thinking about the single that will work on playlists but that's not what sync licensing is about at all. So you really have to set all that aside and understand that, um, really understand what's in your catalog and how each individual piece might be useful for different productions. So, um, for example, a music supervisor would reach out and say, I need a female vocal indie pop vibe that's in the vein of this song. That music supervisor may love my male vocal front band, you know, rock band, male vocal fronted rock band, but that's not what the production wants. So it doesn't matter how much they love my track. That's not what they need. So having an understand of themes, content, vibe for different tracks. And even though you may be an alternative rock band or a country artist, you might have a track that can actually be used cross genre and have different um, appeal when you just think about it as a track on its own. So it's really good to assess what's in your catalog and understand the opportunities that might exist for each song. Here's a good question from Liz Walker. Is uh, CD Baby Sync Licensing exclusive or non-exclusive? So it's non-exclusive. You're totally welcome to find your own opportunities for your music in this way. You know, if you want to do your own pitching, you can work with um, like a boutique licensing agency if you have that kind of relationship. You might want to be careful about is that agency might want to be exclusive, in which case it could be problematic to to give us the rights. But but no, we're we're happy to help if we can, and if not, you can do it on your own. Yeah, and and that's a good thing to to be aware of that you know we are non exclusive, um, but you can't go get another. It's well, it's not a good practice to go get another. Uh, licensing company that's going to be pitching in the same arena. So uh, when you get out there in this world, and if you've had some opportunities and, hey, you're talking to some uh, sync companies, um, for example, I knew some artists that were working with this one sync company uh, that had a very small catalog. They only worked with like a hundred artists and they only had a couple thousand tracks and their sole focus was on movie trailers. They uh, so, you know, when you go to the, the movies and when when we were allowed to go to movies and you'd see the previews, the music in there, that's uh, that's a movie trailer. And that's the you know, the music that's being in, used in those trailers. There, there's companies that just solely focus on that. And they were getting their artists in their catalog tons of placements and making a lot of money. They were not pitching for film outside of the trailers. They were not pitching for TV. They were not pitching for commercials. So. Working with another company that is playing in that arena was perfectly fine. You'll find that there's a lot of sync companies that also focus on commercials as well and don't do TV, film, or movie trailers. So in those cases, it, it can be perfectly acceptable to have a couple companies working for you. But as, as a blanket operation like, you know, CD Baby's looking for a lot of opportunities. If you are signed up with another company that's looking for a lot of opportunities as well, you could bump into each other and that can irritate music supervisors. So uh, Kamal Sharif is saying music supervisors like to break new artists. So I'm sure that's true to the degree that they are gatekeepers and tastemakers in their own right. Yes. I'm sure that there's an element of truth to that, but 
with CD Baby because we have music, you know, going back 60, 70 years sometimes, probably more. And we have, you know, 700 genres from all over the world. A lot of times we're fitting a need that's like, hey, need an actual song that was recorded in the 60s. Or I need like some Bosnian folk choral music or something. It's not always about like the cool new electro pop or something. Um, and it might be actually more often than not, not that case. So, yeah, we, uh, we had um, David Duchovny was in some HBO show that was about the Manson family. Like he was this undercover. I oh, forget what yeah. the name of it was. Was that HBO or I think it was a network show, wasn't it? It was a whatever it was. A there you go. Yeah. We ended up licensing like 12, 15 tracks for that show because they wanted actual authentic music that was recorded in the 60s. And we had an enormous amount of that in our catalog. So they just kept coming back for more and more and more. Um, and a lot of it was artists that, you know, they weren't necessarily popular artists from the sixties, but their music was from the sixties. And it, that's what they were going for this authentic sixties vibe, uh, to help tell that story. So that's an example where people come to us because they know that our catalog is so big. Uh, like Chris mentioned genre, we have so many genres and if someone needs a unique genre or even a unique instrument, I've had that happen before. Uh, when talking to a music supervisor where I need somebody playing this instrument. And it's like, I bet we have a couple albums <laughs> for you to choose from. Right. And it'd be something super rare and find it. And yeah, we do. Totally. Well, you mentioned um, Aquarius, but that's actually happening more and more like Stranger Things came to us and licensed a ton of music for was it their third season? I forget, but uh, yep. this Seal Team is another show that's coming to us qu uh, quite a bit for music. So uh, music supervisors are discovering the sort of the size of our catalog and, and we really do have everything. So it's pretty yeah, cool we've, to see. Yeah. We've had recent Apple ads, um, Nordstrom ads, which, uh, I know we've got a very global audience here today. That's a big, uh, chain of, uh, clothing stores here in the United States. Um, so big ads and it's not just here in the United States. We've had some of our bigger ads have been, I know we had a company in Korea. It was Korea. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Korea that licensed a, uh, is one of the biggest sinks we've gotten, a huge commercial placement. So it's it's very global as well. And, and that market is opening a lot around the world. Um, yeah. We, Hello, we, Erica, we, by the got way. got about 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wanted to screen. just <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to go through some of these other tips. So first of all, your production value is super important. If you have written the best song in the world, it's not going to matter if it sounds like crap, unless some music supervisor really has a need for music that sounds like crap, but that's going to be the exception. So, um, you know, pay attention to at least the sonic quality of your music. Um, make sure you burn instrumental mixes because it could be that uh, an editor wants to use your verse, but somehow the vocals are kind of cluttering up the dialogue or maybe they're not totally perfect for what's happening in the scene. So, uh, they want to cut your vocals out for that, but then have them come in on the big chorus or something. So if you've got an instrumental mix ready to go, it makes it way easier for those folks to edit what they need. And, that, you know, I'm going to say something about that real quick. It's one of those things. I've been in the situation myself with every recent album I've done where you get to the end of the mixing process. Everyone's fatigued. You just want it to be done. The engineer is like, man, you are way over what you paid me for. <laughs> right, right. And I'm like, please, it's 3 a.m. Yes. Please, can you just mute the vocals and burn it down one more time? And sometimes I've insisted and gotten it done. And a few times I've uh I let it slide. And it's a it's a, it's a mistake because uh, you know, that could be what keeps you from getting. A placement because like chris said if there's di important dialogue going on and they love your chorus and they just want it to pop to the chorus uh, but they want the, the better the music to be there it it's they could potentially go on to something else if uh, you don't have that instrumental mix to accommodate yeah and i don't know if we mentioned this yet but these productions move super quick so they really need the music fast if you've got the instrumental mix awesome you mentioned like being reluctant to pay more money while you're in the studio, but it's going to cost you more money if you need that engineer to open up your studio from scratch again and do this. So, you know, now's the time when you're still making the music. Yeah. And yeah, it'll cost them a lot more. Uh, this one is sort of debatable. Different people have different opinions. Internally at CD Baby, 
we generally say don't write for sync. Like don't think in bland generic terms like, oh, what's a what's a song that'll hit the most kind of people? Because a lot of times what happens is you end up watering down the thing that makes you unique and that would make your music stand out. Um, now, I know there are people out there whose basically whole music making career is to write for sync. Um, that's great for them. They might have one-on-one -on -one relationships with supervisors. So cool. If you're you know, signing music up for distribution, it should really be the art that you want to make for you and your audience. Um, so yeah, that's, be, you know, be authentic. Chris, there's a couple uh, quick questions that I think would be great. Cassandra Reeves is asking, uh, who tracks the song? Your PRO, how is this tracked for royalties? Great question. Here's how sync money works. The sync placement is, uh, the synchronization license is usually a flat fee, um, a flat fee for uh, the recording, the, the master recording, and a flat fee for the clearing the song. As an independent artist, if you own both sides, if it's your original music and you have the recording, you know, you're just going to see that all lumped together. So you will get a flat fee when they, you know, say, yes, we want to license this track. However, whatever that uh, got synced to could potentially generate performance royalties. And those performance royalties would be picked up by your performing rights organization and then paid out to you later. So uh, for somebody that, you know, if you got something that got used on TV, um, usually they pay out right around a little bit right after it airs. So they know that that actually got used because sometimes they make last minute changes. You'll get the sync fee, but then, you know, if it's on a big television network, uh, maybe six, nine months, maybe sometimes up to a year later, you'll see uh, some performance royalties come in. And so uh, there's a number of ways that uh, the PROs monitor that, but that's how that works. I wanted to answer, Barry James said, uh, post the names of the songs and movies and networks and stuff where the placements have happened. So if you go to the DIY Musician blog, one of our recent articles in the last couple of weeks um, has a list of all the networks or film studios and then like the name of the show or film. Uh, it doesn't have all the artists and songs because in a lot of cases, like I said, like one show could have licensed 10 different songs. And suddenly that list is going to be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of artists long. And so anyways, that was a bit much for us. So we just put the the networks and the productions. So you can check that out. On yeah, the and those are, blog. yeah. And those are just from uh, the last nine months or 12 yeah. months something like that. Yeah, it's it's a lot. It's it's and it's growing, growing very quickly. Um, there was another question I saw here that. Uh, Let's see. Um, there was a question about, is there any types of music you've had more success in getting placements? Uh, you know, what's happening now is very different than when I was doing a lot of the pitching years ago. Back then was like when Ingrid Michaelson, who was also with CD Baby, we didn't pitch her music, but you know she'd had this huge Old Navy placement that had basically revolutionized her career. At that time, female vocal pop, like indie pop, was all I was getting asked for. Um, I got a few rock bands slipped through uh, and in like some video games and things like that, but I was getting asked for a lot of female vocal pop, indie pop. But that's just because, you know, at that time it, it was a smaller thing we were doing and, and we were dealing with a few TV networks and that's what they wanted. But right now it could be anything. Like Chris said, we've had stuff that's been very historical uh, where it's like we want something from that sounds older or it's something where we've got this marquee artist that's famous, but we can't license their track. So we want something that sounds like that. And they do come to us for cover songs. And that's a special usually uh, a arrangement that we make because, you know, um, like I said, in your account, you can only access it if you have uh, the rights to both sides of the, the track. But it can be all sorts of things. Usually what the best way to gauge what people are looking for is to watch actual TV shows. Um, you know, for example, one that comes to mind that has, is very distinctive 
is Silicon Valley on HBO. I don't know if you've seen that. Um, it's no longer running, but it's a hilarious show. A lot of like electronic based hip hop is what I would call it. Like really synthy, loopy hip hop and that, that really characterized the show. So if I'm a singer songwriter with an acoustic guitar, he's not that, that music supervisor, he's not looking for me. And I say he, cause I know who he is and huh. it is a he on that show. Um, and he's yes. not looking, he's not looking for singer songwriters for that show. He's looking for interesting uh, beats that kind of have that eight bit feel and stuff like that. Yeah. And, so and a splash was just, <clears throat> just asking, do they need hip hop? Uh, yes, absolutely. Like, um, working moms and insecure and I may destroy you shows like that all have a ton of, uh, hip hop music. So there really is a place for every kind of music. And if you're a hip hop artist, the big opera, <clears throat> excuse me, the big opportunity for you is don't use samples because that's what makes, uh, uh, syncing hip hop music hard. But if you have, uh, hip hop tracks that don't use samples that, uh, that, when they come looking for it, that's one of the first things they'll say. We need uh, free of samples. We need to be able to license it now. This show's going to air next week. We got to go right now. Um, and so that's that's a good opportunity for hip hop artists, or even to think about that if you're interested in sync. If you're using a ton of very recognizable samples, especially, uh, that's going to inhibit the process. <clears throat> there you go. That that's the point you were just making. Yes. Own the music you're using. Um, Someone just had, oh, you know, it's it's also Splash. Uh, how do I submit? So our sync licensing program is included with distribution. So if you're using CD Baby to get your music on Spotify and Apple Music and all that, um, it's just one extra checkbox. You don't have to spend any more money for it. Just make sure you have checked that in your CD Baby dashboard. And I wanted to highlight how these things come to CD Baby or the, the method in which we might find uh, a sync opportunity for you. One, we have a whole sync website. You probably didn't know this because it's not geared towards, uh, um, you know, the artist community. It's geared towards music supervisors, but you can go check it out at cdbabylicensing.com. That's the web portal that uh, if you're in the sync program, your music will be in. And uh, we have supervisors that are just, you know, they have that bookmarked and they go check that on a regular basis. So that's one way. Two, they give us actual briefs and say, we are looking for this kind of music. Do you have it? And we will go find as many tracks as we can that meet those requirements and submit to them. And uh, hopefully they choose one of them. Another way is they find your music out in the wild. I see. I saw someone in the comments mention this, that uh, a music supervisor found them on Spotify. So that's a way that it can happen. Like they'll be digging around on Spotify They'll find a track they're interested in. They'll see it's distributed by CD Baby and they will contact us to see if they can get it cleared. And so those are kind of the three main ways for the, the traditional type of sync. In our sync program, we also do a whole lot of other things like uh, supplying background music for hotels and things like that that helps get you paid as well. But um, as far as like the production side of it, as far as film and TV, that's the three main ways. I think you and I are both late for a meeting, but we could just reiterate if you uh, if you're an existing CD Baby artist, just go into your dashboard and uh, make sure you click the checkbox for sync licensing. If you're not using CD Baby yet, you can go here and get started and read some stuff about our sync program. Get all the details. Yeah, man, this is this was fun. People from all over the world. It must be in the middle of the night for some of those folks. Let's see. It's four here. Yeah, must. Yeah. Yeah, well, well, we we appreciate you hanging out. Uh, if you have, uh, feel free to leave more questions in the comments. We'll check it out. Um, feel free to click the share button. Uh, that's always acceptable. And yeah, we uh, will. Chris and I will pop up on Facebook Live every once in a while. You never know. And yeah. We'll speak, more things. Speaking of, what do you want to hear about next week? Maybe we should figure out what people are curious about. Anything about making music, marketing music, making money from music, all the music things. All the music things, not all the, the politic things. things. No, we'll stay away from that. <laughs> but uh, all right. Good to see you all. All right. Take care. See ya.